So on our previous lesson, we stopped at this uh, number four. So we are going to continue with number five. So number five sounds like this. At 25 degrees Celsius, the standard enthalpy change of formation of HF, OH minus, F minus, and water in liquid are given by negative 320.1 kilojoule per mole, negative 229.6 kilojoule per mole, negative 329.1 kilojoule per mole, and negative 285.8 kilojoule per mole. A1, define standard enthalpy change of neutralization. So you have to define what is a neutralization. So neutralization is defined as the heat release when one mole of water is formed from hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion under standard condition. So this is the uh, main keyword. And then you should also try your best to write the equations where you have H plus AQ plus OH minus AQ give H to O liquid. Now try your best to write the state of matter because the state of matter is already given to you in the questions. Huh? Okay, so this is for A1. Then number A2, calculate the standard enthalpy change of neutralization for HF according to the equation. So HF plus OH minus give F minus plus uh, H2O liquid. So uh, you can use total enthalpy change of the product minus total enthalpy change of the reactants in here. So uh, F minus in here is negative 329.1 as given to you above. Uh, water in here is negative 285.8. So minus the reactant 320.1 minus 229.6 in here. And then uh, finally, you press your calculator, you get your answer as negative 65.2 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so uh, very straightforward uh, calculations. Huh? Okay, so this is for number two. Then we continue to number three. At 25, uh, given the thermochemical equation for the reaction below, where H plus plus OH minus give H2O is negative 57.3 uh, kilojoule per mole, calculate the standard enthalpy change of the reaction of HF give H plus plus F minus. So if you notice carefully throughout the questions, uh, there is no information given to you about the uh, H plus, isn't it? because they only give HF, OH minus, F minus, and also H2O, okay? So uh, in here, you have to make use of this equation to calculate what is the uh, enthalpy change of the reaction for uh, H plus in here. And then after you get your H plus, you apply to these equations, okay? So how do we solve it? So first, uh, you use the enthalpy change of the product, uh, find the HF from H plus, so you have a negative 57.3, which is enthalpy change of reactants, uh, reactions, is equals to water, H2O product, minus reactant, OH minus and H plus. So OH minus is negative 229.6. So after you press your calculator, you get your enthalpy change of reaction, uh, you get your H plus, okay? And then after you get your H plus, then you can straight away, uh, you get 1.3 uh, as the result. So after you get the 1.3, you plus the 3.329.1 and minus 320.1. So press your calculator, you get negative 10.3 kilojoule per mole. So this is how you are going to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction for dissociation of HF huh, inside here. Okay. Okay, so any place that is unclear? Okay, so if no problem, so that is how you solve for question number five. So immediately we solve for question number six. So question number six sounds like this. In a bomb calorie meter, the compa uh, compartment surrounded by 945 gram of water, the combustion of 1.05 gram of benzene raised the temperature from 23.6 degrees Celsius to 32.6 degrees Celsius. Heat capacity of the calorie meter is 891 joule per degree Celsius. A1. Define the standard enthalpy change of combustion for benzene. So in here, you should be able to define the enthalpy change of combustion for benzene, where you have to write as heat release when one mole of benzene is burned completely in oxygen under standard condition. Okay, uh, 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, even if you don't write, so never mind. Eh? The most important thing is you must be able to write under standard conditions. Eh? So that is uh, the two points that, that you have to learn on how to define. And then number two, write the balance equation for the combustion of the benzene liquid. So you have to write the balance equations. Huh? So uh, in here is CCH6 liquid plus 13 over 2O2 gives 6CO2 plus 3H2O. 
Okay, uh, all state of matter is a mass. Water after combustion is in the form of gas. Huh? So uh, that is how you are going to write for the equations in here. Okay. Okay. So that is for number six A two. And then six B. Using the caloric data to calculate the standard enthalpy change of the combustion for benzene in the unit kilojoule per mole. So uh, you use the three-step method. So please be careful. Uh, there is a tricky part in here where you have 945 gram of the water. So should you replace the 945 gram of water inside the uh, calculation or not? Now, because you are given the heat capacity of the calorie meter is 891 joule per degree Celsius. So when you already see the unit is joule per degree Celsius, uh, then do you think that you need to uh, add in the multiply in the mass of water, actually no need here. So when it is no need, uh, not needed, so uh, straight away, apply Q equals to C theta. So Q equals to C theta, or 891 times 32.6 minus 23.6. Uh, sorry, I'm typing it right here. 23.6. Okay. So press your calculator, you get your Q equals to uh, certain answer. Then your second point is to calculate the mole of CCH6. So 1.05 divided by 6 times 12 plus 6 times 1. And then finally, delta H combustion is equals to 89091 divided by 0 0.01346. So press your calculator, you get your final answer as negative 601 uh, kilojoule per mole. Okay, so three significant figure with the correct unit. So this is how you are going to calculate enthalpy change of the combustion for uh, these questions. Okay, then place that you are not clear. Okay, so if there's no problem, immediately we move to question number seven. In an experiment to determine enthalpy change of combustion for ethanol, 0 0.23 gram of ethanol was burned and heat, uh, heat is given off the temperature raised of 100 gram of water by 16.3 degrees Celsius. Number one, calculate the heat energy change Q during the combustion of 0 0.23 gram of ethanol. So in here you use Q equals to MC theta. So you use uh, substitute, uh, Q is equals to 100 gram of water times specific capacity of water, 4.18. Uh, and then multiply by the changes of the temperature is 16.3. So I press your calculator, you get 6.8 kilojoule. Uh, actually, it should be in three significant figure. It should be in three significant figure. Uh, in here, the, uh, let me recalculate again. So I'm afraid that later 4.18 times 16.3 times 100 is 6. Uh, 68134. 68134, 6.81. Uh, sorry, uh, supposed to be 6.81 kilojoule. So, can you help me to correct this? Three significant figure. Uh. 6.81 kilojoule. Okay, then number two, calculate the standard enthalpy change in burning one mole of ethanol. So uh, you use mole is equal to 0 0.23 divided by 2 times 12.0 plus 6 times 1.0 plus 16. So press your calculator, then you get delta H is equal to 6.81 kilojoule divided by 0 0.005. So you get 1360 are supposed to be negative. Huh? Don't forget the negative sign here. Uh, final answer is in three significant figure. Okay, so you get negative 1360 must be unit correct, huh? kilojoule per mole. Okay. Okay, so that is how you are going to solve for uh, question number 7a. Huh? Okay, immediately we go to question number 7b. 7b, the, uh, the table shows an enthalpy change of the conversion value. So this is the value. Construct a label energy cycle to show how could this value use to calculate the enthalpy change of the formation for C3H7 or H. Uh, so you have to construct a bond uh, this uh, Hess cycle. <laughs> Okay. So how are you going to get, calculate the head cycle? So if possible, I will usually recommend students to write the equations for the reactions so that you know uh, what to uh, calculate. For example, in here, three carbon solid plus uh, three O2 gas, give three CO2. So delta H is equals to negative 393.5 multiplied by three. And then you have uh, uh, 4 H2 okay, plus uh, 2 O2, give 4 H2O. 
So delta H is equals to negative 285.8 times 4. And then you'll get your uh, enthalpy change of combustion, so C3H7 OH. Plus uh, this uh, 9 over 202. So we give uh, 3 CO2 plus 4 H2O. H is equal to positive negative 2021.0. Okay, then because you want to calculate your enthalpy change of the uh, formation, uh, so our formation is 3 C plus 4 H2. Plus half O2 uh, give uh, C3H7 OH. So uh, in here you should manipulate. Uh, so this one you should uh, reverse, uh, reverse this. So now you get your know, very clearly on the message of how you should manipulate your information. So uh, you after you do the calculations, you eventually get your answer as in here. Uh, okay. So uh CO2, uh, combustion of carbon and hydrogen should be at one side. And then uh, C3H7OH and also the formation should be at one side. Lah. So uh, this is the expected cycle at the end of the day. So I hope that you can construct this cycle. Lah. Okay. So I put it a little bit. Okay, a little bit here so you can see the differences. Okay. So uh, then how to calculate the value? So uh, do I have the value in here? Not yet, huh? Okay. So the first question is to construct a bond Haber cycle. Okay, so this is the uh, not bond Haber cycle, head cycle. Okay. And then the second table will be on the how to calculate all these. Huh? So uh, you get a neg uh, 302 kilojoule per mole. It's supposed to be negative, huh? if I'm not mistaken. Negative 302.7 kilojoule per mole. Uh, teacher, why should be 0. 0.7? Why cannot just 303? If you notice carefully, uh, all of the uh, uh, value given uh, has one decimal place. So your final answer should also have one decimal place. Huh? So this is usually how you manage to uh, capture when to put 0, 0.0, when not to put 0, 0.0 behind. You look carefully at all the units given to you. Okay. Okay. So with that, that is how you solve for question number seven. Huh? With ionization, let's move on to question number eight. So question number eight sounds like this. Define in terms of, uh, in words the terms of enthalpy change of solution to max and then uh, the so how do you define enthalpy change of solution? It is the energy change when one mole of solute is dissolved in excess water to form an infinite dilute aqueous solution. And then uh, under standard condition, that is how usually we should write our enthalpy change of solution. Okay. So in here, it's supposed to be energy change because in enthalpy change of solution, uh, it can be endothermic, it can be exothermic, it can be either one. Okay, so you have to write down. Okay, B, given to you the following enthalpy change of the reaction. One, determine the standard enthalpy change of solution for potassium phosphate K3PO4. So in K3PO4, uh, you should know on how to uh, manipulate among these data. So uh, in here, enthalpy change of formation. So you write uh, how to write the equation for the formation of K3, uh, K3PO4. So K3PO4 is made of 3K plus phosphorus plus oxygen. Give H3PO4, uh, K3PO4, not H, yeah? K, yeah? K3PO4, sorry for that. Okay, suppose that K, yeah? Okay, then uh, your second step is to apply the equation two and equation three uh, inside here. So uh, standard enthalpy change of the third one is the first electron affinity, uh, first ionization energy. Uh, so you have to multiply by three. And then uh, H3PO4, uh, this one is already manipulated. Huh? Okay, so in here you are going to compare these three equations. Huh? Okay, these three equations. Huh? Uh, I'm already manipulated. Okay, okay, so among them, you can start to cancel in between things already. Huh? So which one can be cancelled? So uh, you can start to cancel things already. Uh, 
So 3k cancel with 3k, uh, 1p cancel with 1p, 2o2 cancel with 2o2, 3 electron cancel with 3 electron. Huh? Okay, so at the end of the day, what do you get? You get H3PO4 is give 3k plus k3, uh, not H3. <laughs> I keep on making this mistake. Okay, K3PO4. Okay, give 3K plus plus PO4, 3 minus. So at the end of the day, you get your entropy change is equals to positive 18 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so this is how you're going to solve for how do you get entropy change of the solution for K3PO4. Huh? Okay. Okay, then we go to the next questions. So the next question is, uh, based on the equation, construct energy cycle to relate the enthalpy changes. So you have four energy cycle, uh, four levels. Huh? So the first one is the uh, how H K three uh, K plus P plus two O two give uh, H three P O four. So this is the formation. This is the formation. I use different colors so that you can see clearly. And then uh, uh, we have uh, so uh, this is solution huh? from H three P O four to become uh, 3k plus PO4, 3 minus, but this is, and because this process is endothermic, so you must make sure that your arrows goes up. Huh? Okay, then uh, you should also start to determine for the equation one and two. So for the equation one, uh, you see clearly is how uh, we mentioned P plus 2O2, give PO4, 3 plus 3 minus, give PO4, 3 minus, okay? And then the last one is how 3K in here undergoes the ionization energy. Eh? The, 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 this one is the ionization energy on how you become the 3K in here. Okay, So with that, uh, that is how you construct the uh, von Haber cycle for these reactions in here. Okay, So hopefully you are able to understand better on how to construct a Hess cycle based on all the information given. Okay. Okay, so with that, that is for uh, question number eight. Okay, so with that, that is how we solve for all the structural questions. So finishing structure, uh, finishing finish solving structural question. Immediately we move to the essay questions. Huh? Okay, any questions that you want to ask before I move on? Okay, so hopefully no problem. So no problem. Then let's move on to essay question number one. Okay, in section C, essay question number one sounds like this. Standard energy change of the formation for manganese 2 oxide, MnO, and scandium 3 oxide, SC3O3 are negative 385.2 and negative 1908 kJ per mole, respectively. State and explain in terms of electronic configuration which of these two oxides is more stable. Okay, uh, generally, uh, we can actually tell uh, which oxide is more stable by looking at the entropy change of formations in here. So uh, generally, we say that the more exothermic the reactions, the more stable the enthalpy change of the formations are. Okay, but in this question, they only want uh, not only that they want you to state and they want you to explain why is it like that from the angle of electronic configuration. So you have to write out what is the electronic configuration for Mn in MnO and then Sc in Sc two O three. Okay, okay. So first of all, yeah, you can mention that. Uh, the more exothermic the enthalpy change of formation, the more stable the compound form. Okay, then you are going to start to compare already. So you say that SC2O3 is more stable than MnO. So why is it happening like that? Okay, so this is due to the balance uh, the electronic configuration of the uh, scandium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And then the manganese oxide is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and then 3D5, okay? Okay, so uh, first of all, you have to mention that scandium SC203 consists of SC3 plus ions or oxidation number of SC is plus three. So after you remove the three electron from the scandium, uh, you should have the electronic configuration of scandium is 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. So if you want to remove the next electron, uh, because of the octet configuration, uh, it's going to be more stable, okay? So uh, whereas at the same time, MnO consists of Mn2 plus with the oxidation state of the Mn is plus two. So the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d5. Now, even though uh, manganese in here has a half field 3d orbital, but it doesn't mean that you give 
uh, very much extra stability. Uh, if you look carefully at the scandium, scandium has three S2, three P6, which is uh, towards the uh, octet configurations for an uh, element. So that is why it is the most stable. Okay. Okay, so uh, with that, that is how you are going to answer for question number 1A from the angle of electronic configurations. Okay, so uh, if you see such question again in the upcoming examination, so make sure that you write out the oxidation state together with its electronic configuration and then explain why is it more stable than the other one. Okay, okay so with that, that is how you solve for 1A. So immediately we go to 1B. So 1B sounds like this. Huh? So CaCl is a stable compound in solid state, but will this proportionate to Ca and CaCl2 when dissolved in aqueous solution? Using the data below, construct a bond Haber cycle for CaCl to calculate enthalpy change of the formation of CaCl. So you're given the standard enthalpy change of atomization of calcium is one to eight. <laughs> Excuse me, atomization of chlorine is positive one two four. First ionization energy of calcium is positive. 590. First electron affinity of chlorine is negative 4349. Four, four, and then the T's energy is uh, this one. So you have to learn how to uh, construct bond Haber cycle. So this is the expected bond Haber cycle. Uh, because the question carefully, uh, the question only wants CaCl. So when we only want CaCl, that means calcium uh, ionized by, uh, by removing only one electron, whereas Cl except one electron. Okay. So uh, in here you can see that this is the complete cycle for the uh, reactions in here. Then after you get that, only then you can start to calculate the uh, enthalpy change of formation is equal to the enthalpy change of the uh, lattice energy. Sum, sum up with all the enthalpy change that is applied in these uh, equations like atomization, ionization energy, electron affinity. Uh, so all of them are important in order to for you to get the enthalpy change of formation. So uh, after you press your calculator, what is the expected answer? It is negative 149 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so that is how you are going to calculate enthalpy change of formation for CACL. Okay, so uh, that is uh, 1B1, and then we have 1B2. Uh. So 1B2 asks you to comment. Based on the answer in B1, explain the stability of the cobalt. So uh, because it is negative, uh, okay? So uh, CaCl is stable under standard condition. Okay. okay, so is there any questions that you want to ask for question number one? Or you want to say, hey, teacher, which part you cannot do this part? You, uh, what, what if I do like this, okay? Don't worry to shy. I don't feel shy to ask. Uh. Okay, so if no problem, then we continue to the following questions. Number two, hydrogen bromide gas dissolved in water to form hydrobromic acid. When the samples of hydrogen bromide gas is dissolved in water in calorie meter, temperature of the water increased by 0 0.35, uh, 0 0.57 degrees Celsius. Hydrobromic acid form requires 37 centimeter cube and 1.0 mole per decimeter cube of aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide for complete neutralization. Okay, so that is why number one, calculate the enthalpy change of solution for hydrogen bromide. Okay, so now you have all this information. You have how much is the uh, hydrogen bromide gas inside the calorimeter. So uh, you use that to calculate. So first Q equals to MC theta. Uh, because heat capacity, so Q equals to C theta, sorry. Q equals to C theta, 4.09 times 10 power of three. So you get 0 0.757. And then you press your calculator, you get your Q is equals to 2308.5 joule. Then after that, you can start to build in the equations already. Uh, HBr plus NaOH give NaBr plus H2O. So, and then the next step is you calculate uh, the mole of the NaOH. So mole of NaOH, you use MV over 1000, so you get 0 0.027. So uh, stoichiometrically, one mole of NaOH is stoichiometrically the same with one mole of uh, H. BR, not CL, sorry for that typing error. Okay, then after that, uh, you substitute your delta H2308.5 divided by 0 0.027. 
So you get that in W change of solution is negative 85.5. So since the equation is, uh, the, the answer is negative, lah, okay? So uh, in here, it is expected that this uh, hydrogen bromide to become very soluble in aqueous, uh, in aqueous solutions, lah, okay? In the salt form, okay? So this is how we are going to uh, calculate uh, the entropy change of the solution for a compound. There are so many variations of how you can calculate all this. So just make sure that you know how to apply what formula at the right time. Uh. Okay, so with that, that is how you solve for 2, 1. Immediately we go to uh, 2. This is all the factor that will uh, influence the entropy change of the hydrogen bromide. Okay, so you want the solution of the hydrogen bromide, isn't it? So how do we start from here? Now, because hydrogen bromide, if you want the entropy change of solution, it must be HBr uh, gas give H plus AQ plus Br minus AQ. So what are the possible entropy change that changes from HBr become H plus and also Br minus? How many entropy change? So first of all, what you need to break you need to break the covalent bond. Uh. So when it is needed to break the covalent bond, then you must have a bond energy, isn't it? So when bond energy is applied to HPR, so H and PR uh, go separately. Uh. Okay, both of them are still gas. Uh. So now uh, we continue with the uh, HPR gas, uh, H, uh, H gas and also uh, BR gas already. Uh. Okay, so from the H gas to become H plus aqueous, before become H plus aqueous, what do you need to become first? So you first need to become uh, H plus gas. So from H gas to become H plus gas, what is this? This is the first ionization energy. As for the second one, okay, so in here, uh, if you want to get the Br to become Br minus, you have to absorb electron. So it is the first electron affinity. Yeah? So only then you become your uh, Br minus. Okay, so how many process are there? Uh, and then from, uh, from gas to become aqueous is what? And that will be change of the uh, hydration. So there are generally four NLP change that you can use to manipulate the product of the substance form. Huh? Okay, so uh, you can uh, first you can answer as the bond energy of HPR. Second, you can mention as the first electron affinity uh, for bromine, and then first ionization energy for hydrogen, and then last but not least, from hydrogen ion to become uh, to bromine ion to become uh, H plus aqueous plus Br minus aqueous. So all of these uh, require the correct enthalpy changer. So the, from here, it may be four possibility, one energy of HPR, ionization energy of H, electron affinity of Br, and last but not least, bond affinity of Cl. Okay, okay. so with that, that is how we are going to solve for uh, the these are the factors that determine the topic change of the solution for hydrogen bromide. Okay. okay, so with that, we finish question number one. So immediately we move to question number one B. One three pentadiene C5H8 undergo hydrogenation to produce N pentane C5H12 according to the equation CH2 double bond CH CH double bond CH CH3 plus 2H2 if a uh, pentane molecule and pentane. Uh, so uh, calculate the standard NLP of the hydrogenation for uh, and one three penta dynine. Uh, so they already given you the formula. It shouldn't be too difficult for you to understand, isn't it? So uh, as I always mentioned, uh, whenever you see this kind of question, uh, it is always the best way for you to use Hess law here. So how do you use Hess law to uh, apply in here? So first you write all NLP change in here. So for example, C5H8, Formation is 5C plus 12H2 gives C5H8, H gas plus half water gas to give H2O, delta H negative 286. C plus uh, C solid plus O2 solid gives CO2 negative uh, 394. And then finally, C5H12. 
Okay, so we just follow the question. Huh? Siva H12 plus 802 give by CO2 plus 6 H2O. So because we want our to write our formation equation, huh? which are what? How do I write the formation? So enthalpy change of the formation, delta HF for uh, C5 H12 is pi C plus 6 H2. Huh? So these two uh, substances is also very careful, huh? it be very dangerous. Sorry, I will write it only by C plus six H two give C five H two. Okay, so uh, you can start to apply the changes in the Hess law. So uh, you reverse this. Uh, you don't need to reverse this equation, the one written in the orange color. You need to reverse the first equation. This one you must reverse. Okay, so as for water, you need to maintain CO2, uh, also maintain. Uh, but sorry, uh, uh, because of the combustion, uh, uh, sorry, because of the reaction above, so no need to do so much. Uh. Okay, and then this is the uh, fifth pack. Uh, okay. okay, so the first one you reverse, then the second one you multiply by six. The third one you multiply by five, and then the fourth one you write the equations. Ah, so we can start to cancel things already. So which one you think can be cancelled? Okay, so you can start to cancel uh, C5H8. Okay. Oh, no, 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 not C5H8, sorry. 5C with 5C. 6H2 with 6H2. Oh, no, H2 is what we want. Huh? Okay, cancel 6H2 with 4H2. So you have a 2H2 left. Then look carefully again. Uh, 3O plus 5O is 8O. So cancel again. 5CO2 cancel. 6H2O cancel. So at the end of the day, what do you get? You get... Uh, C5H8 plus uh, 2H2 gives C5H12. Delta H is negative 618.0. If you look carefully, uh, all of the questions inside here has 0 0.0 behind its back. So uh, your final answer should also have 0, 0.0 at its backs too. Okay, so that is how you solve for question number one. Okay, so if no problem, immediately we go to question number two, three, sorry. So question number three sounds like this. A double change of a chemical reaction can be deduced by applying Hess law. So number one, define Hess law. So Hess law, two same keyword. A double change of a chemical reaction is the same regardless of the route taken or the matter the series takes one step or a series of steps. So that is how we define Hess law. And number two, state two postulates as deducing by using Hess law. Number one, uh, reverse the equation, which changes the magnitude, but the vector remains the same. And second rule is the uh, energy, uh, and uh, this, uh, what, the, uh, And the amount of the substance is directly proportional to the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, uh, so these are the two postulate uh, that you have to know or when they, whenever they find a double change of chemical reactions in here. Okay, so uh, that is for three A. Then immediately we move to three B. Given the use standard enthalpy change of the atomization for several species are given in the table below. CH4 is positive 1740. Uh, CH3 radical is positive 130.5. And then HPR is a negative, a positive 39.0. So one, calculate the standard enthalpy change of reaction for homolytic dissociation of the bromine radical. Now, uh, in radical, uh, you can see that there is almost no radical point. Uh, actually, uh, the, what is a radical? A radical is single electron. Uh, so the single electron mass is significant? No, the mass of the single electron is not significant. So that is why you can tend to ignore it. Never mind. Okay. Okay. So uh, whenever you see such a big questions like this, uh, six marks for such a simple question, what it tries to tell you that you have to learn how to write all enthalpy change of reaction in the table above. So you need to write uh, enthalpy change of atomization for all of them. CH4 gas gives C plus uh, 4H gas. And then CH3 gives C plus 3H gas. 
HPL gives H gas plus PL2, so you can start to manipulate already because we want uh, uh, because we want CH4 and PR at the left side, then CH3 plus HPL is at the right side. So how are we going to manipulate? So this one unchanged. So this one you must have a reversal. Okay, reverse. Then HPL, this one also reverse because you want HPL to be at the right side. Okay, so now you are ready to deduce already. Yeah? Okay, so uh, the reverse equation, uh, C gas plus 3H gas gives CH3 is negative 1305. H plus BL gives HPL also reverse, you get negative 3 and 9. So you can start to cancel in between things already. So which one among them can be cancelled? So C cancel with C, three hydrogen cancel with hot four hydrogen, you have one hydrogen, then you cancel with this. So four hydrogen in total. Uh, CH3, eh? uh, CH3 don't need to cancel, okay. So at the end of the day, what do you get in here? You get CH4 plus BR2 gives CH3 plus HPR, okay. And your NW change of the reaction is positive 46 kilojoule. Okay, so with that, that is how you are going to answer for B1. And then last but not least for B2, you have to construct the cycle. Eh? So in here, uh, you should know together that uh, CH4, uh, which three are supposed to be together. Okay, you are going to use these four equations eh? class. Eh? One, two, three, and four. So uh, you should know that uh, among them, these three should be together. I put a stick mark. Huh? So these three are supposed to be together. One, three, zero, five, three, eight, five, and 46. So only then the total, the total summation uh, is also equals to 1740. Okay. So uh, you have to plot uh, in such a way that uh, the later three is in the back side of the equation. Then that is how you construct the head cycle. Okay. Okay. So with that, that is all for the part of our video today. So I shall continue tomorrow with the rest of the essay question. So see you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Okay. Welcome.